Ja, ich weiß nicht, ob ich das später erzähle. Okay, so, hi. Um, I'm Tim. I'm talking about a Tiny Composer Installer. Um, it's a rather spontaneous talk, so there are exactly two slides and one animation. Um, um, so I'm not as good prepared as you were, but um, I've got a live demo. Um, so that's that. Um, so, yeah. Um, Tiny Composer Installer, um, don't uh, understand the name wrongly, it's not something that installs a tiny composer on your computer, but it's a tiny installer for composer, like the PHP uh, thingy. Um, and what do we need it for? Um, the thing about composer is if you try to run it in a, in a CI environment, in like, um, like in, in our case at Fastbill, um, we had the problem that we needed to uh, install PHP dependencies and Composer, therefore, um, in a Docker file. So what do you usually do when you uh, want to have um, Composer in a Docker file? I mean, you could use the, you could use the Composer Docker image and uh, base your application on that, but um, sometimes you don't want to do that. Um, so um, what I did see at uh, other projects and other employers, for example, was um, that they were committing like the whole the whole of composer like the whole of composer.far uh, which is a two megabyte file uh, committed into your repository and you just use that into in, in your docker file and install your dependencies from there um, well, that's better than committing your complete vendor directory that's way better than completing uh, than committing your complete vendor directory i have never seen that anywhere of course <laughs> 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 Um, yeah, but uh, it's like committing, you, you, you commit that composer file and it's, it's a two megabyte file and of course like uh, composer always warns you if it's outdated for three months or something like that, so you have to update it regularly. So you spam your repository with two megabyte files, which is not optimal. Um, so the other thing you could possibly do would be to um, commit just the installer. Um, which is still a 300 megabyte file, uh, megabyte, 300 uh, kilobyte file, and it, it really it doesn't solve the problem. So um, the other possibility you could of course always do is like curl composer installer pipe PHP. Um, yeah. So this is all submitted over, like this is transferred over HTTPS and from GitHub or from the Composer website. So in theory, you could trust them, but I don't know, maybe there's a man in the middle, that's seldom, but what about if somebody like uh, hacked the, the, the Composer website and um, put, put the wrong version of Composer there for like, maybe just the day or something, that this did happen for other open source projects already. Um, and yeah, um, then we started looking at, okay, what, what's Composer's solution for that? And what they suggest you do is, that's the wrong window, that's the right window, um, like uh, how do I install Composer programmatically? And they say like, okay, you just um, get the signature uh, from, from GitHub and then you get the installer from, uh, from getcomposer.org um, can you do this? Yeah, should be readable. And um, then you do like a, a SHA-384 hash on it, and if the signature matches, then you run this guy. Um, in, in my opinion, this is just marginally better, um, because if somebody is able to like uh, put a bad version of the Composer installer on the Composer website, then they surely can put a matching signature on GitHub as well. Um, but it turns out that there is another solution because um, the composer releases um, are not only um, like signed via uh, this, this SHA signature, but there's also a public key. Like the composer developers uh, have a public key, an open SSL public key, which they use to sign the releases. So if you uh, take this public key from a trusted source and you would basically put this trusted key into your repository, and then you can download um, the, the, the Composer installer from wherever you want. You wouldn't even have to use HTTPS because you could always uh, verify the signature that it comes with, um, that it's really signed by that public key and that it's secure to do so. Um, 
And uh, it, this is, by the way, basically what the, the composer installer does. Like it downloads the composer.far and checks the signature against this public key. Um, but it does that in 300 kilobytes. So um, what we did is we do it in 150 lines of code. Um, and yeah, that's basically that's basically the project. Um, so, like, if you go on the on the uh, GitHub uh, page, you're greeted by okay, what what's what's the gist of this, and and what are the requirements and and limitations, and then there's this small section about installation, and you don't see any um, like paste this into your terminal because the basic idea is that you download uh, the install or the the tiny composer installer file. Um, and then this is like that's all of it. Um, and then you you could basically read through it, and that's what we suggest. You read through it, and you see okay, there's no strange things in there. And then you take this one and put it into your repository, and use that to download and install your your composer. Um, so I can just do a quick demo here. Um, because it's like basically just you can see I already did that um, to, to try it like I'm using curl to download this file okay and now I've got this tiny composer installer PHP and it's uh, designed to run in a CI environment so um, it uh, returns a, a correct return code, like it returns zero if everything was was good, and it returns one if uh, something went wrong. And uh, you can you can also like, if you want to, you can say uh, you can just run it, and it uh, will download Composer into a temporary file and just print the name of the temporary file that it uh, downloaded it to. But you could of course also call it like uh, PHP tiny Composer installer .php. And then the, the name of the output file. So if I just call it composer, then it runs and it just says composer, that's the name of the output file. And now I can run no, I can run composer minus minus version or something, and I got a current version of composer. Um, so if we have a look into it, um, it's just is that readable? Yeah, it should be. Um, the, the, the uh, most important thing here is, of course, the, the key, um, the signature key from the um, composer developers. And that's basically it. The rest is just simple PHP code. Um, OK, the syntax highlighting broke here. Thank you, Vim. Um, but um, yeah, that's basically it. So uh, wait a minute. Where's the right window? There's the right window. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a slide for uh, the project and um, for feedback. Um, I'd really ha like to have feedback for for this call uh, for this talk, and also since uh, we've just released this, or not, not just like three months ago or something, we released it as an open source project. Um, we, of course, would like to know whether somebody's really interested in using that. So um, try this feedback form. It just You can do it in under one minute. Uh, I've already tested it. Um, so it's really, really short. Um, before we come to the questions, there's two questions that are usually asked. So I want to tackle them first. Um, first question is, OK, if the original installer is like 300k, how do you do it in 150 lines of code? And uh, the trick we use is, Basically, the, the original installer has a lot of code um, that allows you to run it on basically any system. Like it, uh, it has a lot of fallback code. Like if Perl is not installed, it uses um, whatever PHP F open or something like that. It also comes bundled with um, a whole lot of, of uh, certificate authority um, keys. Like it's at least 100k of that is just keys of CA so that you can use HTTPS. Um, that's things that we deliberately left out because the idea is you don't run it on, on any system, you run it on your CI system, you run it on a, on a defined environment and once you've set up that environment uh, one time um, and you see that it works and you've 
brought the uh, CA files into it or something, or the distribution basically usually has them, um, then you don't need all of this fallback and, and, and boilerplate code. So um, that's how we made it so, so small. And the other thing is, um, how stable is this? Can I use this in production? Um, the current version is uh, 0.1, um, but that doesn't mean that it's not stable. Um, we use this every day and it works. Um, we are planning, or rather I am planning, that's kind of a side project. Um, I'm planning to release a, a 1.0 version soon, TM, um, as soon as um, I've done some refactorings because currently the code is like um, you run the PHP file and you don't have, um, there's no possibility to like include the file and then call uh, some functions from it, um, from, from your code. So you can just embed it into your application directly. Um, and that's something that we want to change first before it's uh, on that whole. Yeah. Basically, that's about it. Any questions? <laughs> no questions. Okay, that can be good or bad, but let's see. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it's something that we could use uh, at Passbell because our CSOC keeps complaining all the time because of the installation process of complaining. <laughs> so it's, like, it's definitely a pain point like, that uh, needs to be addressed. Yeah. It's good to know that uh, you guys have also. Um, one thing about the stability, um, even if it's like, uh, even if we put out new releases, the fact that you download this and you put it into your repository um, means that you don't have to upgrade or we don't uh, suddenly break your CI build or something because it's in your repository and you upgrade whenever you want to. If it works for you, fine, then just keep it going and it's like, it's that helper script that you have that you basically don't need to update because all it does is download the current version of Composer. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>